Okay, so today's webinar topic is on uh, local labs, understanding them and how they work. Uh, first of all, I'd like to talk about what they are. Uh, local labs basically allow you to set up one database uh, to behave differently in multiple centers. So for instance, you could have, say, a computer lab set up and another, uh, say, learning resource center set up um, using a different lab ID and you could make them behave completely differently um, based on their local lab settings. I mean, they can have different rules, different sign-in options, uh, different activities showing, etc. So local labs are also important um, because they allow you to see what's happening at each of your various centers. So for instance, I could go run reports, say, and I want to see what's going on in my uh, oh, math lab, for instance, or my computer lab. Um, but I also want to see what's going on in my Learning Resources Center, for instance. Well, I can run reports and filter on each of those local labs. So I could run data for all of my various centers, or I could run data against a particular local lab. And that's all within one database. So they're important if you want to share data from different centers in a single database, and you want to pull your reports for all those various centers from the one database. Um, if you don't want to share, for instance, you have a tutoring center and an advising center, and neither one cares what the other one's doing, well, perhaps a better approach there would be two different databases. Um, there are pluses and minuses uh, for using each approach. As I mentioned with the local labs, the way to share data and run your reports filtering on the local lab, um, but there are certain limitations to local labs. For instance, uh, some of the settings in AccuTrack or AccuSQL, they're global settings. <clears throat> so I can't set those at the local lab level. They will uh, be in every lab uh, because they're global settings. So if that's the case, then with multiple databases, well, obviously I'd have my global settings would apply against the one database, so I could set it up any way I wanted to. Um, other things like uh, your tutors, for instance, are all global. So if you had, say, 30 tutors in a math center and 30 tutors in a learning resource center, well, your tutor list would show 60 different tutors. Okay, so that's, uh, that can be a limitation. Um, the other thing about local labs is uh, we've really improved how we're handling activities now, which I'm going to show you in this webinar. But uh, in the old days, we had to duplicate the activity um, and then give it a different ID, for instance. So if I had a let's say I have a tutoring center and a math center, I want uh, MAT1101 to be available in both of those centers. Well, if I tried to have MAT1101 in there twice, you know, in other words, import it into each lab, it would complain and say there was uniqueness violation of that activity. So I would have to make it, you know, MAT1101 lab 1, MAT1101 lab 2 which doesn't sound like a big thing unless you're doing that for six different local labs and you have a, a course catalog with, you know, 300 courses in it. Well, you can see that really grows and the, it makes the import process extremely tedious. So in 12, we have fixed all that and I've got a new uh, local lab activity import that's, that's wonderful. So I want to show you that. So again, multiple databases, if you don't really care what the other center is doing, uh, shared local labs if you want to share the data and report on the data for each different center. Okay? All right. So the first thing I want to talk about, you know, I mentioned local labs, but I want to talk about default lab. Okay, now default lab is also known as all, and the way that works is, and a good example is with activities. Okay, let's say I have a reading lab and I have a math lab. In my reading lab, I have things like English literature, British literature. In my math lab, I have college algebra and college geometry. Okay, when, if I set my AccuTrack to default lab, I would see all four of those at the sign-in screen. So it would show every activity regardless of what local lab I have it assigned to. Okay, so default lab is the all lab. Okay, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and log in here to AccuSQL. Okay, so 
I've got some different local labs uh, set up already, but this is my default lab. So the first thing I'm going to show you, now later on we're going to talk about how I define the local lab, but I'm just going to show you how to change the local lab ID on a particular computer. Now think of it this way, um, my sign-in station is sitting at a particular center, and I tell the sign-in station what center it resides at. So if I have a computer lab, well, I would say I'm going to designate you as the computer lab, local lab computer, and you would serve up all of my computer lab stuff. You know, if I had one in a reading lab, I would do the same thing. So, for instance, uh, go to my setup. By the way, this is in setup, center setup. I have two options here, lab IDs and local lab IDs. Okay, we'll talk about lab IDs in a second. But I'm going to go to my local lab ID here. And here's where I define or I tell the computer where it is. Okay, so for instance, I want to say that I'm sitting in a computer lab. Well, I have different ones set up, and I'm going to say computer lab here, save. And it says change to computer lab. Well, sure. Okay, now I'm going to return to my sign-in screen. And I don't know if you noticed or not. I should have shown you. But it said in the beginning, welcome to the Understanding Local Labs webinar. Well, now it's welcome to the computer lab. So that shows me I'm now in the computer lab. And I have totally different uh, options here. Computer lab will be closed, etc. I sign in. And it shows me the activities that I've assigned to my computer lab, which are just the following four here. Okay? I can change the rules, the activities, whether I show service types or not, whether I show instructors or not, whether I show tutor selection or not. All of that is completely up to me at each local lab. Okay? So the tutoring center might serve up something entirely different than what my computer lab here is doing. I sign in, I bypass tutor selection, so now Mickey D is signed in at the computer lab, he's doing his thing. Okay, of course he signs out and he's done. Oops, I think I did too many fives. All right, back in at admin. And I just want to show you how different this can be. So what I've done here is I'm going to change my local lab again, but I've created a cafeteria, okay? Um, so when I change to my cafeteria local lab, we'll watch how everything changes. Okay. So now I return to my sign-in screen. Now I've got welcome to the cafeteria today, specials, etc. cetera, uh, baked ziti. So then I can sign in. And now I've got dining services. I've got lot of the meal is locked to lunch, happy dining. So I've totally changed uh, what I'm showing. It's the same database, by the way, but I've just designated this one as my cafeteria local lab, and I've locked it to uh, lunch dining service. Okay, I continue. I sign in. Mike Smith is now going to eat his lunch. The next student comes in, etc. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you here is in setup options. Now I'm going to go back to my default lab. Okay, and I'm going to click on my options here. And I just want to show you down here on the bottom left, you see how I have this drop-down lab uh, menu. Okay, when I see that lab menu, now... Part of this is kind of misleading, and I'm going to explain that to you. But the great majority of the options that I have here, I can set at a local lab level. Okay, Like I can set up my appointment rules, my appointment confirmations. Now, by the way, this is a new change in 12. Now you can do email confirmations um, at the local lab level. That wasn't available in version 11, but I can have a completely different set of templates um, for my computer lab than my math lab. Okay, so it, this could say, you know, if I changed it here to my computer lab, well, I could completely change every one of my emails, my appointment emails or whatever else, for that particular lab. Okay, and I can do that for many, many of these things. Now, uh, email reminders has the local lab drop down, restrictions, etc. But right here, this one says email settings, and this is mislabeled here. This lab drop-down box should be grayed out here because 
email settings is a global setting. Okay, I'm looking through here and trying to think what else would be a global setting. Um, AccuSL, which is not grayed out and should be, is a global setting. So, I, you know, since AccuSL is running off the web, that's our web-based appointment scheduler, well, I can't designate it like I would here and say, you're sitting in the cafeteria. Well, I can't tell the browser that it's sitting in the cafeteria, so that's a global setting. Okay. And we're working on, and I asked for and didn't get yet, let's just gray, gray the uh, drop-down box on a global setting because it's kind of confusing. But everything else I'm going through here, um, all of these options, not sure, SMS actually might be a, uh, a global, I believe. But the rest of these guys, everyone I'm looking at here, these are all local lab specific. So I'm, I'm setting my default lab. Well, what I can do here is go to cafeteria and completely change the way the cafeteria looks. Remember it said, uh, you know, welcome to the cafeteria, today's specials. So that's totally different than what I've set up for, say, my computer lab, which says the computer lab will be closed. So you get the concept. The other thing back here in cafeteria, well, in cafeteria, I locked my category to dining services and my activity to tour, uh, shouldn't be tour orient orientation. I'm not sure what that is. I thought I locked it to lunch, so not sure. That's a little odd. But let's go back here. I'll tell you the easiest way to do this. Now, by the way, this is a good thing to mention, is if I want to go set up my cafeteria, well, I could change the cafeteria and set it up. And then each time I change screens, I think if I go out and back in, it's going to go set back to default. And I'd have to do it again. But I can change my local lab right here in my uh, local lab ID to cafeteria. And now I know everything I'll be setting up back here in my options screen is all going to automatically be cafeteria based. So I think that's good practice. Change your local lab before you start setting up your local lab. And then you'll be sure that everything you're doing here is for that local lab. Okay. All right, the next thing I want to talk about, I'm just going through my list, is how do we assign activities to local labs? Okay, and I'm going to go to my student setup activities. And there's at least three different ways I can think of to do this. Uh, I'll show you the other two in a second. But let's just look at uh, my cafeteria, or my dining services. Okay, and right here, I, I've got breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but you can see I've got available in these specific labs. So I can modify that, um, and I can assign this activity to any one or more or as many local labs as I want. Okay, um, It might make more sense if I went to my list of classes here, for instance. Well, I could have math, right? And my math would be available in, remember, my default lab. So my main tutoring center could be my default lab. But then I want to say, well, you know what? I also want my math analysis business one to be available in my math lab. So now that activity is going to show up in my default lab and in my math lab. Okay? So that's real easy. If I wanted to be in my math lab and my computer lab and my default lab, well, I would pick those two local labs. Okay, so that's a new feature in 12. Uh, 11 doesn't have that either. So that's one way of doing it. Now, the other thing I'm going to show you here, and actually I'm going to go ahead and add that to my math lab so I can show you where it appears. And that's good. Okay, back under my center setup. Now, let's look at my lab IDs here. Okay, and I have some new options here. Um, for instance, let's look at the cafeteria. I can say view modify activities held in this lab. So I could go on the at the uh, activity level one by one and say, okay, local lab assignment uh, cafeteria, local lab assignment cafeteria, or local lab assignment math lab computer lab. But I can do it here for multiple. Okay. So then I can say, well, you know, I don't want to mess with my cafeteria. Let's say my math lab. I could go in here now and say, you see, there's the one I just added from before, but I could go find all my math stuff, okay? And then I can add all my maths here. For instance, you know, click the first, click the last, and then click the drop down to bring them down, right? I can move them all here that way, okay? So that's a multiple assignment I can give to that local lab right here, okay? And while we're here, and this is important too, 
um, based on a user request, now we can do the same thing for service types. So remember, service types is just that box that appears in the top right when you sign into AccuTrack. Well, I can create a number of different service types and then decide which service types are going to display in which local lab. So here in my math lab, for instance, I'm, I have assigned services or four lab hours and required hours. Well, I have new student tour, not applicable, and uh, self-study are also serve, defined services, but they're just not entered for that local lab. Okay, so I can tell, tell it whichever ones I want to use on a per lab basis. Okay? But there's a better way to do this. Okay, and this is kind of cool because I'm going to be combining a few things here. But in this example, let's go back again, and I want to look at my math lab. Um, let's see. Or I should say my activities. I want to look at my list of classes and my math classes. Okay? Now, I don't have any math local lab assignment for these particular math activities, right? As we just saw, I could have gone to that local lab uh, settings back over here, right, where I just was, uh, over here in lab IDs, and I could manually do that. But now I can also do it with an import, because we got a, a user, and I think rightly so, that said, you know, my courses are all over the place, you know, I've got 350 of them, do you really expect me to pick and sort and go through, you know, every other one or every third one uh, based on the naming schema to have to add all of those in? Well, that's extremely tedious, so we wrote an import just for local lab activity import, okay? And I want to show you how that works. Now, I don't have any of my math activities added to my math lab right now, and I prove that by going and looking at my list of classes and looking at math. And as I go through that list, you see I have no, le no local lab assignment for my math lab, right? Now, I'm going to do that with an import. But think of this. I want to, get, I want to use those math activities that I have in AccuTrack. I don't want to have to recreate or re-import those. There's no reason for it. Um, I just want to get that list out, and then I want to re-import that back into my math lab. Okay, so I'm going to do that using my query generator. Okay, right down here, <laughs> and I can just do a basic new query. I want to get my activities, right? That's what ultimately I want to import into my math lab. Okay, and I want my category. I want my activity, and I, didn't, I don't have an activity ID, so for this import, that's really the only two pieces of information I need. Um, well, I don't need lab ID because I don't, you know, I'm putting them into a math lab. Actually, I might need lab ID. Let's keep that. I, I take that back. We'll see what it gives us. Okay, but remember I said math activities, right? I don't want to get all my activities, so I'm going to say activity starts with math, for instance. Okay, when I do that, I'm going to say, well, give me all of my activities at the beginning part of that activity starts with math. And remember, I can do multiple filters, so I could filter on math or you know, whatever else my, my courses start with there. But I can preview, and if I preview and select that, well, sure enough, there's a list of all my math courses. Now, I don't have a plus on the keyboard. If you, by the way, this is a little tip, but if I don't click preview and select, then it'll automatically have them all selected. So if you want to go in and view it, you can press the plus sign on the keyboard, but since I'm using a laptop, I have to actually pick them. But then I can export that file. I could export it directly as a CSV, but I'll open it in Excel so I can take a look at it. So now I have my category is list of classes. Well, that's what I want to import into. There's all my math activities. Now I said lab ID, but I didn't really need that. And activity ID is just a database table that I, or field that I don't need either. But I do need my lab ID, okay? Because remember, that's part of what, <laughs> it has to know what local lab it's importing into. So that my uh, local lab ID is math here. So I'm going to type math, and then I can just double click if I can hit the sweet spot here, and it'll bring that down to all the other fields like that. So now I've got lab ID math. All right, and I'm going to save this one as a CSV. Uh, CSV. I think I'm going blind in my old age. Where's CSV?
everybody else sees it but me, I'm sure. Okay, so I'll put that on, how about the desktop? Math activities. Okay, so that import is there. Remember, I grabbed that back out of AccuTrack, or I should say the file that I'm going to import. So I'm going to go to my database import, and we go pick the file. Uh, there it is. Okay, and here's the new import. It's Activity Lab Registration is the name of the new import. So I'm going to pick that. Do Next. Okay, and my import file looks fine. And you can see I've got four fields. Lab ID, Category ID, which is the Activity ID. And I'm not using that for my particular activities. But if I did, I would have grabbed that and mapped it. But now I can map those values. So I've got my Lab ID is Math, right? my activity, and my category. So I do that. I finish my import. Uh, class unknown. Well, that makes sense considering, you know, that I had a header. I didn't need the header, but that's what it's complaining about. Category activity lab ID. But I got the 19 in. And now let's go take a look at my activities again. And go find my math activities under list of classes. And you can see now they're all going to have that local lab assignment, math lab, right? So there we go. Just like that, I imported all that. So now they exist in my default all lab, but they also exist in my uh, math local lab. Now, what if I wanted to import those again and I wanted to put them in my computer lab? Well, it would be as simple as me going back to that import file and changing um, the local lab in the import file right here. So if I changed math here, to say computer lab or whatever I named that local lab, I could re-import it again, and then I would have these courses would be in my default lab, my math lab, and my computer lab. Okay. Um, all right. So then, if I went and changed my local lab ID, let's see what we get in our math lab now. And by the way, you don't have to exit AccuTrack. To when you change a local lab, it knows. And you can see, welcome to the math lab. So it's ready to go. And I can change any of my buttons. I can change whether I show the student pad, the tutor pad, whatever. It's totally up to me because that's back in my options. Remember, the options menu has so much stuff in it, and that's almost entirely local lab specific. So you can see, there I go. I've got all of my math activities in uh, my math lab. Okay, I sign in. I don't know if I'm picking tutor selection or not. We'll, we'll find out in a second. Yes, I am. And visit to instructor, and John is in. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, but just to show you here, the, the filters... Um, so if I want to do visits by activity, for instance, well, I could run that report, right? And it would show me, oh, computer lab, I've got online course, open lab use, dining service, lunch, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But now, like I say, I've got my local lab filter. So I want to see all of the visits by activity, but I only want to see them for people that came in my cafeteria, for instance. So I show that report. And now I've got dining services. Well, I had three people come in for lunch. Okay, so using the same database, I can filter that way, um, and run, you know, and obviously multiple filters. So I want to so she uh, visits by activity, but I want people that came in for, to my math lab or the cafeteria. So three people came in for lunch, and I had a couple people come in for calculus, and one come in for intermediate algebra, etc. Okay, so that's a nice, that's a, you know, really the most powerful use for local labs. And, uh, you know, a lot of people that there's, their colleges couldn't exist without all those local labs because they're, they're really dependent on specifying, you know, which, uh, which center is busiest. I mean, you can go look at your sign-ins and say, well, gosh, I've got these, uh, 
three computer labs, lab one is getting, you know, 300 visits a, a week, lab two is getting 200, and lab one is getting 12, well, you, you know, maybe you want to do something with uh, computer lab three. You know, so it's, it's a nice way. You get a lot of information that way. You know, chart visits is, you know, another great report. So, you know, sh and remember, that's the one that shows uh, the traffic, you know, when I'm busy is what day of the week, you know, uh, basically, you know, all of the traffic coming into my center, but I could do that for each local lab as well. You know, so show me the, that same information, but I only want it for people that came into my math lab. So if I do that, it'll probably look funny because it'll be giant bars, but if I show that report, well, all of the traffic analysis I'm doing now is based on my math lab. So I can get a real-time view of who's busy and who's not. Okay, so everything I'm seeing here is math lab specific. And this will finish here in just a second. I'm using an old Vista laptop, so it's kind of slow. Okay, but there we go. You get the concept. All right, let's see what else we've got here. Um, now, creating a new local lab. Well, that's a pretty simple process, um, but then the comple uh, complexity comes in when it's setting it up, right? Because uh, the basic creation of a local lab is a breeze. I just go to local lab ID, or excuse me, lab IDs. I always get confused by those two. And I'm going to add a new one. So I'm going to call it my music room. Okay, so now I have a, a music room local lab ready to go with the name of music. And by the way, when you're doing those imports, you want to use the lab ID labels here. So math, remember I had math, it'd be music. If I want to import into local lab music, it would be just like this. And it is case specific. So if I put big M, little USIC, it wouldn't find that, that local lab. So it has to be exactly the same. But then I would start building my music lab. Now, if I want to change my local lab here, oops, excuse me, change my lab ID, again, confused with that, local lab ID to my music room. All right, then I would start setting up my options, right? I've got my music room set here, so I go through all of my various things. Just, you know, keep it simple. I can say, welcome to the music room. And save that. And then, uh, you know, I've got a little picture here I can put in. I can change my backgrounds on a per lab basis. So let's see, in my C... Program Files, Backgrounds folder. I've got a little music room background. Which is <laughs> kind of busy, but you get the idea. You know, change, I can do things like determine when I want surveys to run at each local lab. I mean, you guys know the option menu, so everything you go through here, with the exception of the ones I mentioned, email settings and SMS configuration, etc. those are... Uh, are global, which would only make sense. Okay, but then I've got my music room here. So I return to my sign-in screen, and it says, Welcome to the music room. So, there you, so I've completely changed my local lab, and now I'm capturing all my sign-ins in my music room. Now, obviously, I'd want to go add my activities, right? So let's do that real quickly here. I'll go to my setup, student setup activities. Well, I could create a brand new category here, right, and call it music and put, the, put that with that local lab. Remember, I can share things. So let's say that, well, you know, it just so happens that in my music room, um, I'm going to let, oh, let's see, I have, I'll let them do uh, college intranet, okay? So I do that. I put that in my music room. Now it's available in two local labs. And let's say that I also... Uh, I perform a welcome for new students, let's say, in my music center. And then I'll add another brand new one here, and I'll call it symphony, let's say. Is that how you spell that? Maybe it's an O. I think it's an O. Okay, so I save that, and then I can add uh, clarinet, let's say. 
Now remember, I want to put that in my local app, so I can do that right here on the fly. Oboe. And violin, let's say. Okay, so I've now got uh, activities that I want available in my music room. Now, I don't really care about things like them picking a tutor, let's say. So I could say, well, tutor selection, uh, do not show that. And let's look at activity selection. Well, I'm, you know, I don't have instructors, let's say, um, so I don't care about it reporting it. And I don't want to use service type. I just really want them to sign in and pick what instrument they're here for. All right, music room services, and that's enough to demonstrate. So I return to my sign-in screen, go in with the student ID, who was already in, so I'll sign him back out. Okay, so there you go, computer lab, member of the internet use I signed to this local lab, welcome to new students, and now I've got my clarinet and oboe. Um, I must not have put my violin in there, but if I would have... I guess I didn't save it or pick it or something, but you get the concept. I could go back and add violin that I missed somehow. So I sign in. I'm coming in for oboe practice, and I'm done. Okay. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you here is uh, let's use local labs with co a computer lab plugin, and it's the same concept. Um, I set the local lab on a computer lab plugin computer, just like I would uh, in AccuTrack. So I'll sign in here as admin. So I have lab ID right here in my computer lab plugin. Well, it so happens that it's a computer lab, but I could just as easily assign any local lab to that. So now I've changed my computer lab plugin to be uh, pointing to the cafeteria, whether or not that makes sense. But there you go. So now I'm signing in from the computer lab plugin to the cafeteria local lab. And I picked another one that was signed in. So there we go. I'm using the computer lab plugin module, but I'm signing into my dining services lunch. Okay. Okay. Just looking through my notes here. And it looks like I've gotten through everything that I was really going to show you at this point. Um, I'll go ahead and open it up to questions if anybody has any. Well, uh, I guess our work here is done, and thank you for attending. Bye. Bye.